only the right questions. It's Quintessential Talks. Uh, so Taylor, can you please explain to us where we went? When was it? Was it on... Uh, Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening. It was... So cool. We went to the hashtag Acer for Gaming event that was hosted by Tech Girl ZA. And the cool thing about this event is it was, yes, it was a gaming event, but it was focused on the female. Yeah. Okay, because often, you know, as a female, you feel a bit, mm, gaming is cool, but how do I get involved? Firstly, I know, I know from my uh, point of view, I've been to events, I've been to like Rage and I've been to these other events. And often, you know, you'll see like these new games to try out um, and stuff like that, but you won't feel that you're able to because of the stereotype of, mm. oh, but you're a girl. Can you <laughs> even game though? Here is our sit down, uh, and this is for Quintessential Talks. It's our sit down with Tech Girl ZA. Listen to this. So you said this is a passion project that, that you're starting up. Uh, where did this all begin for you? So this whole thing actually started because I'm into esports. Um, right. I'm super passionate about South African esports. I just want to put South African esports on the map. And I had this silly idea that the way to do that is obviously sending the, the male teams over. They struggle because the guys over there are playing full time. They're doing yeah. this every day. We struggle to get to that level. But I thought, you know what would be amazing is if we could get an all-girl team there. Because Shaz, who's actually here at this event, mm -hmm. she is probably the only South African player. I mean, she won Copenhagen Games in an sure. all-girl team. So I was like, wow. What would be amazing is if we could get an all-girl team and get them a spot at one of the big internationals. And yeah. we could, as, a, as an esports community, we could train them up and, and we could help them get them over there and ultimately they could win. People would look and go, look, they're from South Africa. And then they would then start looking at South African esports and take exactly. their guys more seriously, which would allow our top players over. This was a conversation I had drank one night at a bar. And, <laughs> like, and everyone was like, shut up, Sam. And I was like, no ways. This is, this is what I'm I can't do. shut up about <laughs> yeah. this. Yeah. You know nothing. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, this is what I want to do. This mm. is a good idea. But to get an all-girl esports team, I need girls playing esports. I need girls in esports. I need girls yeah. gaming. And I was like, well, how do we get girls gaming? Yeah. And the culture of esports in South Africa suddenly is, is on this huge upturn now. So, I mean, now would be the best time. Do you feel that there's better opportunities now for people than there was maybe a year or two ago? Well, definitely. I think there's more money now and there's, there's far more prizes. But it's not going to grow unless we get eyeballs on the content and, and eyeballs on, on the shows yeah. and on the competitions. And to do that, we need more people invested in esports. And to be invested in esports, you've got to be invested in gaming. You don't have to want to compete. You don't have to want to be a serious gamer, but you need to enjoy gaming. I then came to the Nexus after that night at the bar, a little bit hungover. <laughs> First time here, realized what the space was and was like, the best way for me to do this is just to like have a bunch of people in here playing games. I went to the owners of the Nexus text and I said, this is what I want to do. And he was like, cool, let's make it happen. Mm. Asa had a room. They heard what I wanted to do and they were like, cool, let's make it happen. And that was really what this was, was like me just going, this is a really cool idea, let's do it. Yeah, so is this the first step in terms of getting that team together or is, is, is this going to happen now like a snowball effect and it's going to happen very, very quickly? So my, my goal is to use this as a platform to, to promote girls in gaming and yep. show people that when anyone can game, it's fun. And then obviously the idea is, especially here we've got a couple of pros here, to spot a couple of these girls that could potentially be the next big thing yeah. and scout for talent. So the idea is to get more girls into gaming, um, but then also to ideally show them how much fun competitive gaming is. And that's the first step in building my dream team. Yeah. No one steal my dream team idea, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> how, what does the rage quit in a, in a, in a female sense look like? Uh, when it comes to when it comes to esports and gaming as a whole well you don't know they're rage quitting because they never tell you when they're angry they go it's fine you, you all know exactly what it looks like because they'll just go i'm fine yeah there's, there's no public displays of anger there's no swearing they're just like i'm fine and yeah. in seven years time they'll remind you of that one time at the lab <laughs> so they, they internalize a lot of they things internalize. Right? yeah I, I, no i mean that's a that's a huge stereotypical comment yeah. to make in terms of the games that you uh enjoy playing in competition what are your favorites so i don't compete because i'm not very, why not why is that i'm not very good so okay. i thought you know i have this great idea i'll find girls that are good because i'm not very good and then i can just live vicariously through them i'm not very good but i really really enjoy first person shooters i love watching cs 
I love playing CS, except not anymore because now a lot of the pros, obviously, they work with me, they know who I am, so yeah. they have great joy in shooting me all the time. Um, and then I love fighting games. So right now, like we've got Injustice 2 here. Yeah, for sure. I love that game so much. But then I also like some really weird stuff like uh, <laughs> Lego City Undercover is, is a firm favorite of mine, yeah. um, which is a kiddies game. <laughs> it's okay, that's all right. That's but it's fine. so much fun. Yeah. Like, and then I play a lot of Nintendo Switch. Uh -huh. Again, more kiddies games. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Of, I'm waiting. Actually, we, we said earlier, I said, oh, I don't compete because I'm not very good. Yeah. But Splatoon 2 is coming to Nintendo Switch. We have had confirmation it will be an eSport. And I will more than likely be the best South African player at Splatoon 2. <laughs> that is my game. I'm going to set up a team and I'm going to own that space. And the first <laughs> Nintendo Switch uh, eSports player for South Africa. For South Africa, as well. beating those 12-year-olds <laughs> down. That's, yeah. that's going to be my role. Yeah. So obviously this came around, obviously you being tech girl after all in South Africa. Tech girl .co today. Um, do you implement anything from that side of your life into this? Is, is this going to be part of the expansion of tech girl in the future? What is the future of tech girl? I don't, I don't even know what tech girl is doing tomorrow. Um, no, so I mean, Tickle was just a blog because I just wanted to start talking about stuff I loved. Yeah. And it, then it, it blew up into these social channels and then it blew into a YouTube channel and then it turned into the esports hosting and it's, it's slowly but surely become this thing that's, that's sort of snowballing. Mm. This was really just something I wanted to do. There's been lots of talk about will there be more. Mm. I think seeing the turnout tonight and seeing how many people have pitched it definitely should be very more. much so so maybe this is something we do maybe this is a a, a route we go and we start hosting mm -hmm. these events but in terms of i don't know i mean i'm just i just want to have fun like, yeah, that's all yeah. I, wanted. I was like i just want to have a night where me and my friends because there's, there's other girls this is not just me there's there's youtubers here gaming youtubers gaming personalities professional esports players like i said shares i mean she's here yep. my friends constantine 104 and shani they, they contribute to the blog they're youtubers they're here pippa shabalala who's been like an inspiration to me forever they're, they're all here yep. I just really wanted to have a chance to play with my friends. Yep. And you need to make it as easy as possible in terms of showing someone how easy it is to get into this gaming industry and make and make it a, a passion of their own. Because I mean, obviously, if we made it too difficult, it, it, like only guys would be understanding the whole industry. So how do you think you made it easier now for, for women to get involved and, and girls to get involved in gaming? So I think the thing is, is that when you're a girl and I know, so I write about games, I play games, I don't like playing games in public. And I know that I don't like playing games in public because I know I'm not very good. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, most guys are not very good either. <laughs> and, and I used to go to these gaming launches and then be like, oh cool, do you want to try out the game? And I'd be like, well, no, I don't. Because I was, in, I was worried that people would look at me and, and think I could, like, oh, she's so useless. Yeah, and yeah. there would be a stereotype of, oh, she's a girl, she can't play. So I'd be like, oh, I'm just not going to play. Mm -hmm. I'll play at home quietly by myself, but I'm not really going to play with my friends in public. I don't want people to see how bad I am. And I thought... The best way to fix that is really to just have a space where, like what we've done here, where there's some quiet rooms off to the side where you can just come and sure. chill and play. Or you can go into the main thing and just hit it out. Mm -hmm. And it was the idea was to just feel safe to play and for us to go, look, you know what? You don't have to be the best. You can still have fun. There's a couple of guys up here already I've seen. They're helping, like they, they've jumped in and they've started playing. And, and some of these girls are kicking their asses. So <laughs> it's really just about saying there's a stereotype that tells us girls can't game. Exactly. We're here to, yeah. to show you it's not the truth. And if you are a little bit nervous about picking up a console or a, a controller or getting on a computer, you can do that. Also, I think there's a lot of console gamers and here we can now transition them to PC, which mm -hmm. is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So that's a really cool safe space to do that on a PC that you don't have to go and buy. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to ask your boyfriend or your friends to use a PC. You can literally just come up here and try. And that's really what that was all about. Yeah. No, I think it's a good thing. Sam, thanks for uh, talking to us. I think the final thing that I would ask is as a, as a young girl, where w what was the moment that you were like, this is the rest of my life. I'm going to be a gaming uh, tech writer or, or something like that you know when what, what was around that time in terms of cartoons you used to watch and all those kind of things that you were like you know what I'm a geek and now I have to I have to be okay with that my dad bless him um, when we were kids my father was like obsessed with Star Trek like obsessed yeah and he used to wake us up at like 11 Mnet used to run Star Trek specials <laughs> and they used to come on at 11 o'clock at night and he would wake us up at 11 o'clock at night get down here and be like come you have to watch this and make me watch it and then we still he took us on our first overseas trip to, to the UK I was very excited we went to London and we went to Madame Two Swords we stood in the queue for two hours and um, I was so excited to go in and take pictures with fake famous people then wax and yeah. 
yeah. we, we were there for half an hour when he found out via someone standing there because it was a time before cell phones that there was actually a Star Trek exhibition happening at the Natural History Museum and that they had the real Star Trek the, the Enterprise the actual right deck right there you could go and take <laughs> photos he made us leave Madame Tussauds <laughs> yeah. and, took us, and I still have a photo of my brother and I looking very unimpressed standing on the bridge of the Star Trek Enterprise and it was at that moment um, I mean I hated him at the time the fact that I, I kind of understand some Klingon. I mean, I was like, you, you know, you're a terrible dad. But <laughs> years later, I, I'm, and I think the moment that I realized the geek was strong was when I was watching the new Star Trek movie. And I turned to my boyfriend at the time and started explaining to him what he didn't understand. There because there was a whole history. And I think when that explanation started happening and he looked at me like I was a complete weirdo, I was like, this is my life now. And I'm just going to own the fact that I'm the biggest geek out yeah, there. And yeah. I'm happy with it. 